Welcome to the 106th episode of the Flip Learning Network podcast. I'm your host, Troy Cockrum. Uh, the Flip Learning Network podcast is brought to you by the EdReach Network, bringing educators a voice, a big voice. Tonight on the show, we have Josh Micah. Um, Josh is, I, I came in contact with Josh through um, the Jacobs Educator Program at uh, Indiana University, which I was fortunate enough to become a part of last year. And Josh is a winner this year. And um, Josh has an interesting role as a um, teacher librarian. And um, tonight's topic, I decided we would talk about how we can, as teachers and educators, redefine um, the media center and and media specialist as a resource uh, given you know new technologies and all those things. Josh, can you tell us a little bit about your role um, in your school? Yeah, yeah. I uh, taught fourth and fifth grade for about eight years in uh, just a regular classroom and uh, uh, the I guess the window opened up shall we say for the uh, for the library media position the, in our district is the LRC director and I don't know, I just thought I could do a ton out there, you know, a lot more than just showcase, hey, here's some new books. And when I moved out there, it was one of those situations where I asked the teachers because I wanted, you know, instead of them just coming down to check out books, I really wanted to, to see the kids and I wanted to teach little mini lessons. And not just about, you know, like information literacy, not just about literature appreciation, but also get in, you know, um, get into their curriculum and just show them the other side. Because I remember, you know, how many times, you know, like your students will ask you, like, why do we need to know this math? Or, you know, like, what is this important for? You know, and, and trying to show how, you know, not only is the library a place that you can discover your passions, but also a place where you can find your answers to pretty much anything. And since the library really isn't contained by four walls and hasn't been for many years now, um, I wanted to show them and give them the opportunity to go beyond the book, beyond the topic. And that's what I've been working on for the past uh, for the past eight years. And then uh, along the way, um, my principal kind of like I wouldn't say challenged me, but he encouraged me to 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 try and develop a a, a third part um, and really look at coaching. You know, and how can you be a instructional coach yeah, using you know all the resources that you have. So as a librarian, yeah, I've got like resources when it comes to literature. And I've got you know pretty good knowledge of our collection and and you know places to find it elsewhere, but like all the other things you know like if I if if I wanted to make a video with my kids or if I wanted sorry that's more of like a very specific one but if you know I have a curricular topic and I want to you know um, use technology and integrate it and you know learn with it um, what are some resources to do a final project on this. You know, and so I've been developing that role for the past, I guess you could say, almost like three, maybe four years. And uh, so that's, you know, that's that's where I'm at. That's what I've, uh, the trifecta I've been working on, shall we say. <laughs> so you don't have a classroom of your own? No, I mean, our library is quite substantial. Um, and we got about 23,000 books, but really it's more, <laughs> more books than some, you know, junior highs and high schools. But it's... But it's uh it's more about you know um, creating that just in time learning right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't tell you how many times last year I had kids coming down and you know they'd be coming down with an iPad or they'd be coming down with a laptop and they'd want to record audio, you know, for a video or something, or they'd want to record the actual video, or they needed a quiet place to work. And so um, you know, thanks to a, a an internal like district uh, innovation grant, they wanted to create these these spaces in our, our library to do just that. And so they worked with us. They, they said that we, they really wanted to, to work with my school because they felt that, you know, with um, our principal and my leadership that we could pull this off and really, you know, utilize it. And honestly, with all the kids coming to me, I felt like this was just going to be. And so um, we've got some semblance of that. Sorry, some semblance of that. But uh, it's, uh, it's still a work in progress. I'm still trying to, you know, figure it out. But but we have are getting the tools or the sorry the places to make those dreams a reality and uh, being there to help not only work with the kids but you know coach the teachers and coach the kids 
to to have them achieve those goals is, is very rewarding. Definitely. So what percentage um, do you spend with students and what percentage of time do you spend with teachers? Well, I'm definitely more of a, like I, you know, probably because I taught fourth and fifth grade for, you know, so many years, I, I still see my role as teacher first and foremost. You know, I, I mentioned to you earlier, I, I started my ALA accreditation being a, a, a library media specialist. I got about a third of the way through the classes and, and I decided to, to switch over to my doctorate, and I haven't necessarily gone back. Um, as I also alluded to, I don't know if my wife would let me get another degree, but it was really, uh, it's really more, you know, the teaching comes first and foremost, but then, like, for the past eight years, this now is my ninth, but for the past eight years, I've actually had kind of an easy, shall we say, situation where uh, um, every administration that's basically walked through the door has um, respected what I do, and the teachers that are in my school also, you know, respect our time and, and, and what the kids get out of it and what they get out of our time. So when they come to bring their class down for 20 to 30 minutes, they stay. And that has been powerful. I'm not, I, in the past, I have not been a special. You know, it's not like mm -hmm. in the elementary sphere where you have, like, gym and you just drop off your kids at gym and then you go back and do your stuff. They stay, we work together, and it's been, I don't know, it's just been cake in a sense. To, to you know, I, I, I'll, I might be using Prezi, and I remember a fifth grade teacher came up and said, hey, can we do that with my kids? I got this neat project with, you know, the earth's changing surface. And I'm like, yes, let's do this, you know. So it's almost me dangling carrots or demonstrating different pieces of technology. Uh, you know, again, trying to weave them in because it's just ubiquitous these days. Um, and then they just... A lot of them, you know, pick up on that and say, hey, let's do that. Or they're like, wow, that was really neat. I don't think I could do that. I'm like, you can, you know, and let's let's tackle that. So I would say, coming back to your question, most of it, say about 50% of it's with kids. The other 50% is left open. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of people are like, well, you have all these open time slots. Well, you know, I leave those open time slots. For me, I leave them open so I can collaborate with teachers. So when those just-in-time moments say, you know, that teacher really wants to work with Prezi and their kids, I can go into their classroom and I can give them a bunch of different times to do that. Um, and then, of course, there's all the other jobs of an LRC director, you know, that I probably should do just as much, you know, building the collection, you know, weeding, uh, um, you know, uh, just uh, working with literature in general, you know, some of the classic roles. But but thanks to uh, a great district and, you know, library media aides and our computer support people, our team, you know, frees me up to do a lot of that extra stuff. So I'm kind of lucky in that respect. Well, I'm intrigued, too. I mean, it's I just, this, this, this current school year, stepped out of the classroom into a similar role oh, yeah. um, where I'm helping teachers integrate innovative teaching methods and 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 we did we did we used to have a computer teacher who would have the kids come to the lab and be a special and they yeah. decided my principal decided to go away from that role and he hired me on and he originally called me technology coordinator but all the teachers were like so when are my kids going to come to the computer lab and <laughs> I'm like that's not that's not the model we're using anymore so yeah. we had to change my title so that people wouldn't just expect me to be a computer teacher yeah. or an IT person so um, it, but it's 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 worked out well but in the, at least in this area that that's new i mean yeah um in, there's in, still I schools mean, out here that have a computer teacher and it's 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 hard you know it's like it's not the 1990s anymore <laughs> you know i mean Again, technology is ubiquitous. You don't have to sit down and say, hey, let's learn PowerPoint today, or how about we try Keynote? You know, it's more, what's your project, and let's figure out a tool that goes along with it. So that's great to hear, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, and that's why I was intrigued by you, because, I mean, I know your job's evolved over the eight years, but the fact that your school has been in a position to do this over several years mm -hmm. um, is, is, in is interesting, because, you know, it, it's... People are seeing how much it's needed, that, yeah. that kind of role. Um, yeah. how, how, do you, how do you explain or how do you convince people who don't, who don't necessarily see that it's needed, who want that old role, how do you convince them or show them that 
this new role is the future? <laughs> that is a great question, Trey. Um, it's a, it's a, I would, it's not a battle. That's the wrong word. It's a constant, you know. I would guess you could say like winning them over. You could take the the classic model. I don't remember if it was Ben Franklin who originally put it there, but a, a friend of mine um, described it as a three car train. So you have the the people in the front who are always the you know innovators who are gonna, you know, you're always gonna work with. Then you have the people who are reluctant, kind of like you can do this, I can't. And then you have the people in the back car that are never gonna do it. So you don't spend your time with all those people in the front. They're naturally going to innovate and try new things and be risky. You spend your time in that middle because it's going to convince the guys in the back to come forward and move the middle people up to the front. So um, that's where I try to spend my time too is like I, I try to, you know, when I get those teachers that, are, you know, kind of come and sit down, maybe do their work and maybe casually do something, you know, I, tr I try to jump in and show them, you know, that, not only can they do this, but it's it's definitely something I'd be happy to help you with, you know, because I'm one of I'm I'm more of an informal coach, I guess you could say. My district doesn't literally look at the role as a coaching. These are kind of like fields that I have pushed myself into, and again, I've been supported. But uh, but I I think I think I like I said, it's just a constant, you know, who's next, what what um what situation presents itself. So there's been, uh, there's been projects that I've worked on that we, that really were just in the moment. So uh, I, I had a, I had a, last year we had teachers who were really uh, devastated by the central um, elementary, uh, hur um, not hurricane, sorry, tornado that devastated um, a town in Illinois here and, and, uh, and we decided, I believe it was Washington, Illinois, and um, and we decided to do a you know a BB care project, and uh, they stepped up and they wanted to do some things. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should grab my camera and start documenting this. And so I became like this unofficial you know um, video videographer of the whole experience and interviewing kids and teachers and parents along the way. When we got to the um, when we got to the school, you know, just videotaping the or taping videoing the kids. Um, you know, getting, you know, these uh, blankets and stuffed animals uh, because I think it was something like 80% of the kids had lost everything, you know, and uh, it was a very rewarding thing and, and when we actually, a few of us went down there, not like the whole school traveled to the, to the town, um, they needed to see what was going on. They needed to really understand, you know, our kids really needed to see what had happened and see the kids and see what they had created and come full circle. And so that was an exciting, you know, endeavor. And then we've had uh, other situations where um, R.J. Palacio is an author that um, she wrote a book called Wonder, and uh, and our district was bringing her out for uh, Naperville Reads, it's called. And so the the you know the two districts, our public library, they all get together, they bring an author out, and then you know our kids read the books, and we we have a huge district wide, you know, Naperville wide. Um, uh, reading program, you know, and it's uh, it's very it's a great program. I'm I'm honored to be a part of it. But uh, what what was set up was they wanted to create a, a welcome poster, you know, and then sign a pledge because the book is about uh, this kid Augie who's fictional, um, but he has uh, uh, facial abnormalities and he's been homeschooled up till fifth grade and then he's going to public schools for the first time and you can see. You know, some of the you could have probably already play out some of the storylines that went in there, and it it really it really mirrors like some of uh, the author's experiences with her own kids, uh, and 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 running into a girl that had facial abnormalities, and she felt she needed to get this book out, get this story out, and it's you know it's a very moving book, it's a very passionate book, but I uh, but I knew that if the kids you know did this um, this I I tune this pledge and wrote this, you know, signed their name on a poster that both of these were going to be thrown away at the end of the day. So we set up, uh, we set up like a, a, a pretty ghetto um, photo uh, studio. I had a, you know, black sheet from Target in the back, lighting. I got out a decent camera, and I had them take on a dry erase board, finish the sentence, I choose kindness, by, And they showed their faces, they showed their statement, and it just was really powerful. 
and we made it into a quick video, and it was one of those situations where I realized I pr this was a learning experience, you know, because the, the author, when she saw it, she said, can I have that? And I had to tell her no, because I had not secured, like, any permissions, and I had, you know, nothing of, of that sort. But it, it made me realize that this message could go out over social media, could be more powerful and more, you know, um, it could have more influence than just, you know, within our four walls or within our district. So those are some of, like, the just-in-time projects that, you know, I collaborated with, collaborated with the fifth grade teachers and the students to get their voices for that one I just mentioned with the book. Uh, all kinds of collab. I mean, literally the community, the teachers, the kids, everything for the BB Care project. And then there's just all these little things along the way. So some of those seem just in time, and some of them are almost a little bit crafted. I talk too much. Sorry. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely all right. Because um, I like that that three cart system you talked about. Yeah, yeah. I tend to spend time with the front cart too much because they're easy. They, they oh, are yeah. there. Oh yeah. You know, they're like they're asking questions. They're they're the fun ones because you get to try all kinds of new stuff. And and I have to remember to. Especially revisit the the back cart because they yes. they'll run me if if I let them. And, oh um, yeah, but I also like this idea you were talking about of sharing kind of what we're doing. I I've ran into I mean you know I'm in a new school where you know when I was in the classroom it, it took me a couple of years to get comfortable, but I shared everything I did. I put yeah. it out there what my students were doing, and so then I come to this new school and. Um, you know, a couple weeks ago, one of my teachers was like, "I think I'm going to use Plickers," so I tweeted it out, and she's like, "I don't know if I'm comfortable with you tweeting that out." And I said, well, why not? And she goes, "Well, that kind of puts me under pressure to actually do it." And I'm like, uh. "I said, yeah," but I said, "I said, Plickers," you know, I tagged Plickers on the tweet. You never know if they're going to respond. You, you got to right, right. talk about what you're doing. I said, if you decide not to do it, nobody's going to follow up and say, "Hey, you didn't do that." But I said, yeah. you got. And then, so then we also just got 3D printers, and um, I worked with our seventh grade science teacher on developing a project with our 3D printers. And she and I said, "Do you mind if I blog about this?" And she's like, "You blog?" And I'm like, "Yeah." I said. Actually, a lot of most of the teachers don't know that I have a podcast, so <laughs> um, they're going to be surprised when they start seeing some some of these podcasts. But um, oh yeah, you know, I said, and she was like nervous about, well, why are you going to blog? And I'm like, well, there's people out there who are probably just getting 3D printers like us and want to see what yeah. people are doing with it. And I said, yeah. so we're going to talk about our successes and failures. I said, if if you want, I won't mention your name at all. I'll just say a teacher. You know, if you want. You know, I'll make sure that we don't put any kids in any pictures that can't be photographed. But I said, you know, it's it's a chance to reflect one on what we do, and two to put it out there for other people. And oh yeah, and we're still get. I'm still getting. It's just not something they've thought about. How, you mean share what we do outside of the building? You know what I mean? And so totally, it's taking some time to get them to. To get that, my principal gets it, but the the a lot of the and some of the parents are still behind, you know, the times as far as technology goes, and so oh, yeah. they're just like, we don't want our child's picture, you know, out on the internet. And I said, well, you know, what if your child hits the game-winning basket in the championship basketball game? Right, and, right. And the the local newspaper puts their picture. Are you going to complain about that? I mean. You know, yeah, get that positive stuff out there. You right. know, you know when we talk about those digital footprints, when we talk about, you know, when you Google yourself. I mean, if you put enough positive stuff out there, yeah, I mean that's what they're gonna see. So I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Have you have you had um, pushback from staff about sharing things? Uh, not as much from sharing things. You know, I think. You know, when I work with uh, when I work with my my fellow Apple Distinguished Educators, and I say, hey, I need to video you for this one part. Can you tell me about what you think about using Apple TV in education? You know, just for an example. You know, that, that was actually proposed to me. Like, I was walking down the hallway, and a couple of guys came up like, hey, Micah, can you tell us a little bit about Apple TV in education? I'm like, sure. So I'm like, all right. You know, okay, go. You know, just like, you know, kind of like tonight, you know. 
But uh, I can't tell you how many times like I make videos at home or, or I'm at school and I need to make videos and and uh, I, I go, hey, can I videotape you or hey, can I, you know, and they're just like, oh, hey, whoa, I don't know, where's this going, you know? And so it's the same kind of thing because I, I rely so heavily, not heavily, but I mean, I would definitely say like when in doubt, I'm going to make a video about it. You know, like when they gutted my library and they set it up and we're still like honestly trying to get some of the furniture in there and get, you know, uh, get back to quote unquote normal. But um, I made a video about it, you know, like what do the kids need to know what happened in here? Because they all have the same questions. And uh, I had brought it up on my phone tonight at a, a meeting after school um, with some other LRC directors. And I, I said, she's like, well, what's going on over there? I'm like, oh, here, let me show you my video. Click, you know, and she watched on my phone. And then the other one's like, this is why Josh always makes us look bad. <laughs> like always like doing stuff like this. I'm like, I, you know, I, 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 video respond, uh, fit, kids respond to video, especially at the elementary level, I find like so much more. If I make a video of myself walking around the LRC, giving a tour that video is going to be attended to ten times more than if I literally walk them down and mm -hmm. said, here's these books, this is how you pick a book, and if you don't want it, put it back kind of thing. Um, something as simple as literally a library topic or something even more complex like using uh, a piece of tech or, or demonstrating something. Like it just, it's just so much better. You know, so that's why when it comes to my lessons, you know, there's almost always a video component in there somewhere whether it's one they watch while we're having the lesson and they need to you know infer and con you know uh, connect all these things or if it's something that's for later because a lot of the stuff I put on our LRC lesson web page is really for them to go beyond the book go to beyond that topic when they're home you know and so uh, I, th I guess that's kind of like my I don't know, squirrel kind of like moment, you know, here's something shiny, but it's, you know, it all ties in and I always have that uh, overall goal. I don't even know where we were going with that. <laughs> totally got off track. Right. Sorry. Yeah, you know, and it's interesting too. I just, uh, just yesterday, a teacher asked me to show her students how to do Wii video. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I said, can I just make a video really quickly and, and send that up to you? And she's like, I'd really prefer you come in and show them. And I'm like, okay, how about this? I'll come in and show them, but <laughs> I'll have the video, and then for the kids who weren't paying attention in class, just direct uh, them to the video. Uh -huh. To and I said, I think you'll be. I don't. You know, I won't be surprised if most of the kids go back and watch the video, even though it's the exact same thing I said in class. Oh yeah, and oh, yeah. and uh, you know that's just that concept to her is is new to her that students can get some basic information from a video and then come to class and do something you know and it's yeah, yeah. Uh, so it, you know it was it it was fun to kind of show her that but then having to explain to her how to distribute that video to the students so they can watch it and right. you know all that process and so. But, you know, I was encouraged that she wants to use WeVideo and try some video projects. So Yeah, totally, totally. Um, well done. <laughs> and it's, uh, so, so are you using Google Classroom? You know what, our district is right now in a, in a pilot. Okay. And, uh, you know, they, it's an odd kind of place to be. You, you <laughs> think about how many uh, schools are out there. Um, have done many pilots and we could probably take their research and make a decision <laughs> without doing a pilot. Um, there's one angle to that. But then, you know, uh, I know uh, our administration also looking like with the setup that we have, what's going to work best. And usually, I, if, you know, I, I look at the past and how like curricular elements have gone, it's usually some kind of blended model. And so I know that we have uh, at least some schools looking, you know, specifically at like the Google environment. Some are working with the Apple environment. I even believe there's some working with the Microsoft environment. So we're we're looking at the big three players. You know, I'm obviously a little biased. It might be why I'm not in the uh, my, why our school is maybe not in the pilot. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, but uh, but you know, um, so we're we're just trying a bunch of things out. I haven't. Uh, I haven't really been in contact with a lot of the other schools because it's you know it's been a bit of a you know challenging uh, start to the school year uh, for our library and our school uh, getting together in that respect. But uh, but yeah, we're looking into it. We're definitely looking into it. 
So yeah, I guess I should go back and find out. Um, is your how, what is, is your school one to one? Is your school bring your own device? How how is your school set up technology wise? I'd say district wide, we're about three kids to one device um, overall. Um, I believe the goal is to go one to one. You know, and that's part of the reason we're doing this pilot is like, how exactly are we going to do that? Mm -hmm. We did dabble in the you know the BYOD back in the day. Uh, you know, maybe about two years ago. Um, I don't really know why that maybe stopped uh, per se, but we've tried a bunch of different things, and I and I think uh, they're really moving forward with you know what one to one is probably what we're gonna what we're gonna have in the future. So it depends. You know, it could be something uh, like a let's say an Apple ecosystem. You know, in the primary grades or the elementary era, and then moving up through junior high and high school, it may be something completely different. But our district has been uh, very multi-platform, I guess you could say, in every situation. There's even, a, there's even if you're like a, a fine arts teacher, you typically get a, a choice. Do you want you know, a, a PC, or do you want a MacBook for your district-issued laptop? And, uh, and so they support both at this point. And that's uh, we've been com we've been coming a long way with that, and so I very proud to say that that uh, that we're pretty strong multi-platform users. But um, but yeah, I don't know what we're gonna what's where it's gonna go in the future. It's just like something that this uh, this year will tell for sure. And uh, you know, I can always cross my finger that it's like that. <laughs> well, I think it's important to be to be multi-platform. I always say it's it's. Students need to use the best tool for the job, not the best Absolutely, thing yeah. that, that you can afford to buy right. or that you've told them they have to use. And um, so, but I find in, in our role that because we we allow bring your own device, uh, we're getting closer and closer to one to one. But we allow them bring your own device. But then I become the student who can't get his iPad to work. The teacher says, "Well, go see Mr. Cockrum." And so the uh -huh, kids, uh -huh. kids stand at my door going, "I can't figure out how to do this on my iPad." And it's like, yeah. You know, so that um, is a trouble. Yeah, that is a, a huge <laughs> challenge with the BYOD stuff, and and we do have kids, and we have a we do have a student network guest network. So if they have a, a username and password, which they should, they are allowed to bring their own devices for classwork for reading as well. But I, you know, I sit right next to the people who are the computer support, and they're just like, the kids come down with a Kindle, like, I, I don't know what's going on. You know, <laughs> see what I can do here. <laughs> it's tough. So, so where do you think um, this, this role, I mean, I guess, I mean, you say you have a lot of books. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would say every time that, uh, every time I have a lesson, there's, you know, technology woven within there is always something to go at the end beyond the book, beyond the topic. And then, you know, throughout, I always have, and this is something that I, I have in the, the book that I'm actually working on, uh, the digital book, you know, kind of explaining how I see the job. Um, I always have a, a setup where there's a, a shelf for literature that either, either pertains or new literature that also pertains uh, to the topic at hand. So... Uh, like we had Constitution Day on, uh, gosh, yesterday. And so, you know, um, I have like a bit of a spiraling curriculum that I've kind of created looking at different parts of our Constitution everywhere, everywhere from, you know, kindergarten where it's like, you know, how is a king versus a president? You know, where, what's the differences? All the way up to the Bill of Rights in, uh, in fifth grade where they're actually studying as part of their social studies unit of their social science unit, they're looking at the history of America and how it was born and revolution and a lot of those big topics. So I always have literature that goes along with that. And uh, we live in a, a blended society. I mean, <clears throat> you know, we, you, you read a lot of the Pew Internet research and, you know, you might have kids, like one of the most recent ones talks about kids that are really young, maybe don't see the value in library. Mm -hmm. And I'm hopefully, I feel like at my school, I hopefully they understand the value of a library based off what we do. I'd like to think that they do, you know, but, um, but then like overall, uh, you know, those kids don't maybe necessarily value it, but they do value like handheld tangible literature and, and, and not only them, but other studies that they've done, you know, kids like really getting, um, really getting books in their hands. I mean, it's still, 
very powerful and still very, there's that ownership and gosh, there's nothing like the smell of a new book, I'll tell you. <laughs> so, and uh, go ahead, I, sorry. I, I start to see a, a, or there's, you know, a decline in, in the public library and we, we recently did a survey as far mm -hmm. as just to find out who had internet at home, who didn't have internet at home, that yeah. kind of thing. And, and one of the questions was, well, if you do not have Wi-Fi, was kind of the question, where do you go to find it? And we, you know, we listed, you know, a relative's house or the, you know, the coffee shop or the public right, exactly. library. And very, very few of them put the public library. Really? Oh. And uh, you know, I kind of have this vision that the the, the school at least in a lot of communities, needs to become more of a community center because people aren't yeah. seeing, unfortunately, aren't seeing the public library as that community center anymore. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we're working on ways to, how can, how can we responsibly provide Internet for our students in the, in the neighborhood and things like that? Yeah. Um, because, unfortunately, the, the public library is having to cut back hours and things like that. And, um, so... I, I agree that there needs to be a role in, in still providing those opportunities yeah. for books <laughs> as yeah. well as, as, as multimedia. So. Yeah. I mean, we've, uh, you know, there's people have toyed with, you know, checking out some of those, those little hockey puck hotspots, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, you know, and one of the, the things in my, uh, in my study, I studied kids that, that actually were in a very atypical situation where, this guy had written so many grants, he had so many different, you know, so many varieties of technology that he actually let the kids take them home. But in the process of doing that, he said that he didn't want to, you know, cir circumvent like family rules when it came to using the internet at home. So he just shut it down. So they would take devices home that couldn't access the internet. It's like, you know, driving a car without wheels. So it was. Mm -hmm. It was kind of interesting to see what they did or didn't do, um, but yeah, I mean that the, the public libraries are always going to serve and help, and I feel they should. You know, even our community, our our school library should should help those those in need and those people that don't have those resources. That's a big part of what we do. Uh, but I also want to get into you know start checking out things that are unique. You know. Uh, I can't, I can't, I can never remember how to pronounce his name, but Eli, uh, I think it's Nyberger. He's up in the Ann Arbor Library, and he is very outspoken, but um, very passionate um, about his opinions, you know, with the library. And, the, and Ann Arbor is a very unique place and an awesome place, too. Uh, but he checks out, like, he, he kind of takes, like, the Ace Hardware model, at least. I don't know if he would agree with the, my description of it, but... You know, like you go to you go to a hardware store, you go to Home Depot. I need like a, you know, a power washer to to clean off the side of my house or my my patio, right? You're not going to go out and buy one of those. You're going to rent it. You know, so he he gets things at his library that are very unique, but just past past that like price point that you would maybe go out yourself and just buy, and he he checks them out. You know, uh, unique musical instruments, um, electronic you know devices. And so this year I really want to get some of those just things that are, you know, just a little bit past what people might typically drop just to try something out. And, um, you know, and, and things that are definitely educational too, but, but to, to check them out and have kids, you know, take those home and tinker. Um, and another goal this year is to really get into like kind of like what you were talking about with the, with the maker space, you know, starting with some 3D printers and other ways to, for kids to really like create. You know, so we have some small groups working on programming and Scratch, but like, what what physically can we give them? You know, what are some of the like like just the tools, the electronics, like sometimes literally, uh, that they can start tinkering with and create their own projects. So those are some of the big ones <laughs> looming, but uh, <laughs> definitely something I, I want to get into. You know, to to continue my growth. You know, and uh, and get out there because there's definitely a there's a lot more that we could do. Doing a lot of fun stuff, but there's a lot more we could do. Yeah, and, and I, I I like that model as well. That you that uh, you know I I got a, a Sphero ball. Yeah, and, and that's one of the I, ones I want to check out. I show it to one student, and then I have six students waiting outside my office the next day. When I'm like, I've got one. I'm sorry, <laughs> I have one. You know, and, and so but then that's when I go to my principal and say, 
I got six or seven kids who want to use this, so can we buy more? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and that's kind of, uh, we, we try to look at everything as how can it be scalable? Right. And, and how, how can we not spend a lot of money on something that we don't need to spend a lot of money on? Um, and then the other thing I like to look at, you know, there's always somebody who suggests go apply for grants or find a big donor. Yeah. And that's great. But if I'm looking to do this, if, if I want another school to be able to do this, they're not going to be able to get the same grant right. or the same donor. Right. And exactly. so I try to look for ways. Can How can we do this? In a way that any other school could could replicate our model, um, right. and I think cool. that's, I think that's important for growing the field is being able oh, yeah. to instead of when someone says really well how did you get that well we have a donor that gave us seventy five thousand yeah. dollars so that's how we got <laughs> that it. would shut most people they just like shut them down all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally yeah. Um, so how can uh, the listeners find you? What, you know, do you blog? Are you on Twitter? Things like that. I am not the most uh, active blogger ever. I uh, I just wrote one recently because uh, some of the iBooks author widgets are going to come to um, Book Creator app, and I was like, whoa, they're going to do that? Can they do that? Is that possible? You know. Uh, so that was the one that I was really passionate about on a Sunday morning, and I I was like, you know what? I'm going to sit down. I'm going to blog about it, but. The last blog before that might have been about three or four months. You know, uh, on Twitter, I do I do throw out some uh, some tweets from my professional account, and that's the one that's you know down on my lower third here. Uh, and then I have a, a BB account, which I'll send you if you if you want to include in the notes. Um, and then you know one of the one of the big things that uh, I like to you know promote, you know, because being a part of it, I'm very proud to be on. Apple Distinguished Educators. If you go on iTunes University and you look for Apple Distinguished Educators, you'll find a lot of the free resources that my colleagues and I create, and it, they're just they're out there. They're great ideas, and they're they're content that you could. We try to make content that you could like literally turn around and use the next day in your classroom. So there's a lot of good stuff out there if you hit up iTunes U and uh, look for Apple Distinguished Educators. But yeah, Twitter blogging. A uh, little other social media, but really, that's that's those are my two biggies. Well, thanks for your time. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Certainly valuable what you had to say for my listeners. So yeah, and it's an honor being uh, being a part of this. Thanks. I'm I'm excited to become a, the part of the Jacobs Educator family here. It's it's, good it's, stuff. it's you know we're glad to have you. It's a great uh, opportunity to have somebody, especially in, in the role that you serve. So thanks. <laughs>